The delegate is a foundational piece of Harness CI-CD as well as other components of the platform. I'll give you a quick explanation of what the delegate is, what it does, and we'll talk through how to do your first delegate install. I'll touch on a handful of other considerations and advanced topics, but that's for another time. So we'll start here on developer.harness.io and we'll look up the general delegate overview first. This will give us architecture as, as well as background on what the delegate is and what it does. So you'll see here this little graph. On the left hand side, I have app.harness.io as well as users. Now, this could also be used in the case of self-managed platform on-prem, but for our case, we're talking about SaaS. So over here, this is where the control plane sits where the interaction happens. On the other side, inside your firewall is where the delegate sits. This reaches outbound only over HTTPS, and this executes tasks on our behalf. So that means when you're talking to your Kubernetes cluster, when you're talking to your secrets provider, etc., this is not happening from Harness SaaS. This is happening on behalf of Harness SaaS by the delegate. So the delegate is more or less an actor, and this is something you can scale out horizontally. You can do a number of things to make sure it is highly reliable and secure. So we'll talk through now how to actually install the delegate. So you'll see in my account here, I can install the delegate in a couple different places. For one, I could go to my account resources page here and install a delegate globally and make it available to all my users. On the other hand, I could also go to the project level and have it be just available to those within a given project. This can also be done at the org level as well, so you can scope your delegates appropriately if some are more sensitive or not. So, you'll see a couple different options here for one, Kubernetes versus Docker. Uh, you can also install on Kubernetes with a couple different modes, Helm Chart, Terraform with Helm, as well as Plain Manifest. We're going to do this just for our example, and I will set up one and call it Kubernetes Delegate Laptop Chris. So I could customize the YAML here. I'm just going to go ahead and take the out of the box YAML, and we'll take a look at that, inspect it, and then apply it. So we'll take a look here in my downloads. You can see the Harness Delegate YAML. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at what's in it. So I'll talk you through at least some of the resources. There's additional ones that I won't touch on today. There is the namespace. You can customize this if you want to. There is a cluster role binding for cluster admin. For some uses of the delegate, this might be higher privileges than necessary. You can par this down based on what you want it to be able to do. The secret, as well as a actual deployment here for the application itself. You'll see it has replicas one, you'll see things such as CPU and memory. These can all be scaled up as necessary. Other important considerations here is we do have the ability to integrate with Prometheus. So if you want to monitor to make sure the uptime is good, you're good there. Additionally, there's a bunch of additional parameters that you can also put in, such as an init script here, if you need to install things when it first boots up. We can also play with proxies, very friendly like. So if you need to have it leave your network or egress in a specific fashion, that's fine as well. There's additional stuff within this file that have to do with upgrades and some operational things around the delegate. We won't touch on that today, but you can have it be automatically upgraded or you can manage the upgrades yourself. So with that, let's go ahead and apply it to my local Kubernetes cluster. So I will grab the command here from the UI. Very straightforward, of course. And you'll see the different resources are created. So namespace, cluster role binding, the secret before the application deployment, so on and so forth. And I mentioned before about upgrader as well as other cron jobs and service accounts for that. So let's go ahead and take a look here and see if it's coming up. So you'll see here that in the harness delegate ng space, 
it is in the process of starting. Now let's go ahead and just watch that now. So this usually takes one to two minutes depending on how much memory and CPU you've, you've provided it. You can follow the logs as well as you need to. It will do a handful of operations as it starts up and then connects back and phones home to the address or to the uh, harness delegate or control panel. All right, now it's running, so let's go ahead and switch back to the UI view. We'll verify that our delegate is running. So you can see we have connectivity here. So from here, what would you do next? Once the delegate's installed, typically what you're doing is you're adding your connectors. So in this case, we have a built-in secrets manager, but it could be you want to integrate the secrets manager now, or you want to have an actual Kubernetes cluster that is now integrated. So I'll give you a quick example here. We'll go ahead and just attach my Kubernetes cluster as well as a target. I could specify master URL credentials. I can actually use the delegate's role itself to assume control and be able to potentially deploy to my Kubernetes cluster. You can see my delegate right here is healthy. Go ahead and select that one, save and continue. Now, if I wanted to, I would be able to connect to and deploy to my local laptop cluster. So that's a general overview, what the delegate is, what it does, where the architecture is, you can find that on developer.harness.io as well as a lot of other interesting material around how to manage the platform. I've walked you through how to do a basic installation. There are a lot of different modes and ways you can do this and manage your upgrades. Thanks a lot for watching.